I think I'd like to create, like Billy Wilder. I show you the apartment and tell you something like it hot. Or maybe, like Mr. Hitchcock, I'd make you scared of heights, ropes, birds, and binoculars. But until then, all I have is this Time Store Cinema. Hello, YouTube. Internet. World. Welcome back to another episode of Time Store Cinema. On the road. Let's talk movies. Today I want to talk about a movie that I've mentioned in passing several times throughout the course of my uh, channel's life. And that is the Japanese film Tokyo Gore Police. Now, you guys, you have to understand that I am well aware that this movie is, in one sense, terrible. I'm not, I'm not naive to this. It's, uh, it's something special though. <laughs> and I was debating on whether or not to talk about Tokyo Gore Police or talk about uh, Machine Girl, which, they're in the same vein, and they're in the same um, uh, category as a lot of other movies. Uh, Japanese low-budget cinema, at least the kind, the ones that um, seem to find their way to the Americas, tend to be the these uh, schlocky, low-budget, campy over-the-top gore movies. Um, so there, for instance, uh, Tokyo Gore Police. Um, it is um, a lot of over-the-top gore. It's, it's not a horror film. It's just a gore hound flick. And what makes this one particularly good um, is that throughout the course of the movie there are these uh, advertisements thrown in to make it seem almost like a documentary even though it's not shot like a documentary at all but they just have these advertisements thrown in but what's great about it is the advertisements are not for um, normal products <laughs> They are for, um, well, in one instance, they're for um, pretty colorful razor blades uh, by which teens are supposed to purchase these to cut themselves. I know, I know, it's, <laughs> it's a topic that really shouldn't be laughed at. You shouldn't make light of it. It's a serious topic dealing with depression and uh, addiction I, I know that but I you know there's a very dark and cynical part of me that just finds it absolutely hilarious particularly the way that they did these <laughs> these um, advertisements and then I mean on top of that, they also do one for, for uh, seppuku. So, you know, you have a guy who fails at his office job and the advertisement is basically just like, well, since you failed, you might as well, you know, kill yourself ritualistically. So. Uh, so that's the type of dark humor that's in this movie. But on top of that, uh, it kind of blends in like a... Um, evolutionary X-Men type of thing, uh, on top of, like, body horror elements, and sword play, and it's just, it's a mixture of all these different things, and the acting is over the top, the gore is way over the top, the story itself is, is bananas, um, there are, are 
people who have this particular type of gene that causes them to mutate. It allows them to, when a body part is severed, they grow a weapon, a, a, a biological weapon in that body part's place. So, and it's all based on this mutation that essentially develops this key within the, uh, the body of the person. And this key uh, is both physically, literally, and meta metaphorically, it unlocks these powers. So it's, it's a combination of all these different things. And I know that part of the confusion when, you know, a Westerner watches it is, is cultural. But I also know that it's not only cultural, it's also because it's just a weird movie. So I understand... <laughs> that it's a little of both and it is an absolute crazy movie and what makes it so fun is the fact that it is so crazy like everything is over the top there's not a moment in this film where you think that the actors or the director aren't aware of what they're creating it's not an accidental thing it's this very self-aware ridiculous movie and that's what makes it fun and that's why I mention it so often because you know you have movies like Saul or Pre Saving Private Ryan I know those two things are very rarely uh, said within the same sentence but you know a lot of gore you know somewhat realistic looking scary used for for you know to to be horrifying even if not in the horror genre um, you know, so that's one way of using gore. But in this movie, gore is used as just something to, um, <laughs> I don't know, it's like kind of a way of uh, painting a, a scene. It's kind of, uh, instead of set decoration there's just gore instead of uh lighting element there's just gore and say it's used as as like a backdrop of the movie or, or um just part of the movie itself i mean the fact that the that it's in the title of the movie kind of expresses that uh, but what makes it they keep it fun though which is why it still works it's not it's not gross I mean, well, I mean, some people might find it gross, but it, it's comedic, and it's meant to be comedic, and nothing is meant to be taken seriously. Everything is pushing the boundaries of of what is uh, <laughs> taboo or tasteful. The whole movie is that way, all of it, and I think that they do it in, in such a good way, in such a comedic way, that they get away with it, unlike a lot of movies that try to do the same thing and fail. I think this one actually succeeds. This one and Machine Girl, I think both succeed. Um, one movie that's in this vein that I don't think does succeed is, oh, what is it? If I can try to remember what it's called. Um, it's something along the lines of Frankenstein Girl versus Vampire Girl. Something along those lines. It's another one of these gore fest um, Japanese movies. I think that's what it's called. It's something along those lines. Um, but, I mean, it has its moments of, of being funny and silly and, uh, and cheeky. But it doesn't... I don't think it succeeds on the whole like, uh, like Tokyo Gore Police and Machine Girl do. Um, and particularly Tokyo Gore Police. And maybe to, I like Tokyo Gore Police so much because it's, it's uh, the first of this genre that I saw. And uh, it really resonated with me. And this was back when I was more interested in, in gory films, more interested in, in that element of horror. I'm not as much anymore, but this one I still enjoy watching. So it, that, that I think kind of um, is a testament to its, uh, its campy quality, is the fact that I'm still interested in, it, interested in it after all these years, after my taste in movies have changed. Uh, so I, I think that's a testament to it. Uh, so basically, the plot... You know, the plot is crazy, like I said. It's weird. But but the general plot is that um, it takes place in the future. And like I said, there's this um, um, 
biological mutation that causes people to, um, like I said, be able to grow weapons from their bodies. So there are these elements of, uh, of self-mutilation. -mutil uh, uh, it all ties into to the story. And um, there's a task force, in, task force in the police uh, who are specifically trained to fight these mutants. And um, the police station is, or the police force is now privatized, which lends into the story with a lot of corruption. People are being targeted uh, needlessly. People are being killed without any fault. And there's, uh, it follows the main protagonist, a, a female, um, essentially ninja samurai police officer who uh, brandishes a katana and cuts people down to size. <laughs> And um, so it kind of follows her as she is on this case of following these people and uncovering the corruption within the police department, which leads to a final battle of um, fighting the, the main police officer, the chief, which that fight in itself is worth watching the movie. It is hilarious. Oh my gosh, it is hilarious. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I mean, it's it, the story itself, it, there's a lot to it, and there are a lot of twists and turns, uh, some of which aren't handled particularly well in the movie, but are still fun. And like I said, you don't want to watch this movie thinking that it's a serious movie, or it's an important film, or anything like that. You want to watch this as something that's really fun, something that you're not going to take anything seriously, because if you do, there's a chance you could be offended, because... It makes light of, uh, like I said, cutting and suicide and um, addiction and other things like that. So, you know, if, if you're going to be offended by those things, absolutely don't watch it because it, it pokes fun at it. And like I said, it's, it tries really hard to, to um, toe the line, as it were. But if you go into it realizing that it's just a silly, silly movie and that's all it's trying to be, then I, I think you'll have a good time. I think you'll you enjoy it, uh, particularly if, if you're into the, the, the schlocky, uh, trauma-esque, or uh, trauma-esque movies. I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, in any case, thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe if you're into that kind of thing, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.